let's continue in chapter 3 of First Timothy. And Paul says that if someone or if some holy person, if any holy person, reaches for an overseership, as though stretching himself out to attain, to reach forward for the goal, the function of what? Of becoming an overseer. Someone who is watching or scoping is the duty or function of being watchfully careful. Pertaining to whom? Pertaining to other holy people. Having guardianship pertaining to other Christians. So if someone reaches for overseership, he intensely yearns a beautiful work. Here's an example of a beautiful work. So the one who is reaching forward for overseership, he is desiring a beautiful work or a beautiful deed. He is fixing or attaching strong desire on a beautiful work. And this word translated intensely yearn, or it could also be translated as the word lust, but it's used here in the good sense. Because Paul says he intensely yearns a beautiful work. Yes, we can attach strong desires, but it needs to be on what God says. What God says is a beautiful work. Overseership pertaining to other holy people is a beautiful work. It has a manifested decorous or harmonious goodness. It is acceptable to God. And it is a work. It's not a gift. It's a work. People who want to be overseers must work, expend their energy in the overseership function. Paul says, following on logically from what I have written, it is necessary for the overseer, it is binding for him, or an overseer ought to be in the following state, in his behavior, in his walk. How? Irreproachable. And that word irreproachable means that an overseer cannot be taken hold on or can't be caught by someone else wrestling against him. In other words, the overseer should be alert and prepared no matter who or what may come to try and catch him in his words or actions pertaining to God's word. An overseer must be the husband of one wife, an adult male or a grown man who has one woman, not having a woman in every location he may visit. An overseer is to be sober, free from intoxicants. And this would also include the figurative sense of being in control of his mind. Being in control of his mind and body, in other words, to be receptive to what God wants him to do, how he, God wants him to behave. Not being in a stupor, but being in control of his mind and body. He must be sober. And sound thinking. Here again, we have that word sound thinking, which we saw in chapter 2, verses 9 and 15. That is, having thoughts in his mind in alignment with his salvation. And an overseer must be orderly arranged. Again, we saw that in chapter 2 in verse 9. He must be orderly and arranged or ornamented, adorned appropriately. He must be loving strangers. And this word loving is that word phileo, or that brotherly or friendly kind of love towards strangers, towards those who are not immediate family members. He must be apt to teach, skillful in teaching, not wine-oriented, not to have wine beside him all of the time, with the corresponding conduct. Paul is talking about behavior, so he must not. The overseer should not be oriented towards wine, wanting to always have wine near him. 
with the corresponding behavior of forces having too much. Not quick to stroke or to strike, not ready to hit other people, but on the contrary, he should be considerate. He should be disposed to yielding appropriately towards others with fitting suitableness, considering the rights of others in a righteous or a just manner. Of course, that would be according to God's word. An overseer should be without fighting, not a brawler, not contentious towards others, without loving silver. Again, that word includes the word loving or that phileo, that brotherly or friendly kind of love towards silver or silver coins. And the overseer should be beautifully standing before his own house, presently standing in front of his own house or those in his house, his household. You know, to stand before them means as a leader, standing in the capacity of being a leader, as leading them, leading them in a manner that is beautiful, that has that manifested decorous, harmonious and acceptable goodness to God. And Paul continues to explain how a person, an overseer, would stand before his own house in a beautiful manner, having his children in subjection with all reverential behavior. So an overseer would hold his children in submission to him, arranging them in subordination with all or every behavior that is in a manner having deference to God and all the things of God, which is deserving of reverence and respect from himself and from others towards his children. We saw this word reverential behavior back in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. But if someone or if an overseer does not know and continues not to know to stand before his own house. So if an overseer doesn't perceive in his mind that it doesn't come between his sense of perception, he doesn't recognize, he doesn't see to the end of perceiving and knowing in his mind regarding how to preside over those in his own household, how will he be concerned for God's church? How? Will the overseer have an object of thoughts for God's assembly of holy people? That is the church. How will he take care of and have concern for the church of God? An overseer should not be newly planted. And that word translated newly planted literally refers to a plant that only lately originated, of course, in the context here. It's figuratively referring to someone who has very recently become a holy person, has just become a Christian, and he's beginning to learn all of the things involved with God and his word. So an overseer should not be newly planted, why not? In order that having been conceited, he may fall into judgment. See, it's for the purpose and result that this overseer, if he were newly planted, so that he would not fall down into the pronounced decision pertaining to the devil. To fall, resulting in being in the state of the sentence that was passed on the devil by God. And why would that happen? Because the neophyte, or a newly planted overseer, being a neophyte, he would be placed in that position of overseership and he would or may become conceited. He would be, become beclouded, as it were, as being engulfed in smoke in his mind and he would not be able to see outside of himself. He would be focusing his attention purely on himself and his being an overseer instead of concerning God and his word 
and all of the holy people in the church, in the assembly of God. And so he would become conceited and he would fall into the judgment of the devil. Just as the devil became conceited, he became that way, but God arrived at his decision regarding the devil's behavior. Paul also writes that it is necessary also to have a beautiful witness from the people from outside. And it would be a beautiful attestation that they would give because he, they would see his behavior. They would see how he behaves himself as he's living among them in the world today. People can see you walking down the street. They can see how you behave or how you interact with other people. So Paul says, it is necessary also for an overseer to have a beautiful witness from the people from outside. Why? For the purpose and result that he would not fall into the reproach and trap of the devil. So that is so that he would not fall down into the reproach would be defamation or the insult issuing from the devil. And in, he would fall into the trap or the snare that would hold him fast so that he would become entangled. And that trap, of course, would be set for him by the devil and those who work for the devil.